Hello, this is Michael Prince with BecauseFamily.org and FamilyTechBlog.com. I just realized I have a gaping hole in the tutorials that I have available for families. And so I have decided right now, in this moment, I'm going to be making this MacBook OS X parental control guide for families. So here we have my MacBook with my wonderful children, Jason, Olivia, Brenna, and Alton at Silver Dollar City here in Branson. And uh, we're going to set up this MacBook to have parental controls. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to go click on the Apple here, which gives you all of your main setting features. Click on System Preferences right here as great icon, clearly labeled parental controls. So I'm gonna click that. Now, nobody ever uses my computer except me and my wife, mostly me. And so I'm going to set this up for the first time here. Um, so this is, it says you're logged into administrator account. You can only apply parental controls to accounts that aren't administrator accounts. So I'm gonna have to create a new one to allow parental controls. So I gotta add my password here. Now, my son, I'm gonna say for my, my 12 year old, he wants to edit video on here and stuff. And, and so I'm gonna give this to him. So his name is Jason and I'm just gonna say P. All right, so creating him, here we go again. More of my password. All right, <clears throat> now, here we go. Allow use of camera, nah. So you're able to set a lot of different options here. See, web, parental controls, stores, time limits, privacy, and other stuff. So I turned off use of the camera. He will not be using the camera. Allow joining game center, no. Limit mail to allowed contacts, sure. Limit applications on this Mac. So this is great because you can literally go in here and tell it what he, what he can and can't use. So as you open this, all the stuff that's on my computer, I can say he can or can't use whatever's on here. So you can literally limit him to only the software you think that they need, if they're younger or whatever. So I know he's going to want to try iMovie. Um, I know he's going to want to try all that stuff. So there's you know different things on here, games and things that I don't maybe do or don't want him to use. I don't really care though for this instance. Here's the web. So this is where you want to set your filter settings. Allow unrestricted access to websites or try to limit access to adult websites. And in this you can click customize and you if stuff's been blocked that you don't want to be blocked, you can add it to this allow websites list. And so you simply just go. So if it's blocking Facebook and you don't want it to, which for my 12 year old, I don't care about that. You can just HTTP colon slash slash Facebook.com. And then anything with the facebook.com that starts with facebook.com, it will allow. Now, I'm not really doing that, but that was a good example. Um, oh, and the one below it, I should say, this is one that will never allow. So maybe, and for him, yeah, Facebook sometimes isn't inappropriate. But he doesn't ever need to be on Facebook. So I'm going to always block Facebook, always. I'm also going to always block YouTube. And then that's okay. This here, limiting access to adult websites, is going to be automatically monitoring and eliminating any adult websites that are in their database. And there's thousands and thousands of them. This is what you call a whitelist. So this is only going to ever allow access to the sites you put here. Then stores, you can go in and set, uh, disable the iTunes store completely. Disable Apple Books, iTunes U, restrict music with explicit content. That's good. Movies, PG-13. And it's it sets to the 12 plus automatically. Uh, so that's helpful. Time. Here's where you can set time limits even if you want to for your younger kids. and Or on school nights, Sunday to Thursday, weekend. So uh, there you go. Privacy settings. You can manage privacy settings. This is going to give you a lot of different, uh, several different options on what's allowed to get what information from them to make changes. Click back just to go back to that. Allow changes to contacts, calendars, reminders, diagnostics. Yeah, I'm not going to allow them to change any of those things. Uh, so I'm going to turn all that off. And then other. This is where you can turn off just little specific things. Do you want them to be able to print? They can't burn CDs and DVDs. People don't do that anymore. <laughs> Restrict explicit language and dictionary. Prevent the dock from being modified. So if you don't want to mess in with your settings on your MacBook, that's a good one to click. Use a simple finder so they can only find files you know, in a simple way. Turn off Siri and dictation. All that's there as well. And then if you click the lock, well, yeah, if you click the lock, boom, then it will uh, lock it up and you have to enter your password to be able to make changes from then on. So if he doesn't know my password, which he doesn't, he can't get into my MacBook account, my OS X profile here, 
and make changes to his settings. So he's going to be filtered. Um, but uh, then, but whenever you want to go back, you have to be on your account. And so you have to be on your account. Then it's going to allow you to get back in there, set his parental controls like that, and do whatever you need to do. So if you go on the web, limited access to adult content websites automatically. And then when I click lock, it's going to keep him from making any changes to that. So I recommend this. If you're somebody who's trying to help a kid who's been looking at stuff they shouldn't to, to set restrictions, if you yourself need to set restrictions, you're going to want to set an account for you to use that is not your primary account on your device and make the make it block explicit content that way. Um, I also use an accountability software. You'll see right here, this AU is accountable to you. And um, this is a website I highly recommend uh, or a, a service I highly recommend. And you can use a promo code because family to help with that. And what you do with this is it automatically monitors whatever operating system uh, or browser you're using for any kind of adult content. It works on all these things you see here, um, Windows, Windows, Mac, Android, um, iOS, uh, the Chrome cat or Chromebooks, things like that. Your your Kindles. It even works on Linux. So if you're a super user of a computers and you can't find anything to help you stay accountable on those, this is an option for you, um, and it's very fairly priced and stuff. So I recommend setting those filters in your MacBook, but also using something like this uh, to protect your devices from inappropriate content. Uh, well, it, it's going to allow the content, but if something slips through these filter you set, this is going to report it. And you can even go in and set how strict it is at reporting and things like that. So, and they've got group plans, small business plans. It's really, a, they've really expanded and done a really good job and we're happy to partner with them as affiliates. So, so there you have it. Thank you so much for uh, watching this and please share this with your friends. And if your kids are getting MacBooks at their schools or they're, they're getting, uh, they have a MacBook or if you have one at home that you let your kids on, this is a great way to get them, let them have an account, be able to use the, the device and do what they need to on it. Thank you again. We'll see you next time and uh, goodbye.